Hola, ¿qué tal? You're listening to Green Exchange. This is our thematic mixtape number six. Feel at home and get ready for 30 minutes of escape. It's time to disconnect and travel the world. You know it, the central element of our mixtape is a music track. Around this track, we tell stories. We feature quotes, insights, or whatever connects to the sounds that we're playing. Today we're taking you to Colombia in South America. And let me be clear, this music is going to make you want to dance. But further than this, we wanted to use this theme to take a deep dive into the reality of Colombian change makers. Like you and me, they are working every day on making this world a better place. What can we learn from them? From the situation in Colombia, how do they live? What are the key challenges for social and environmental change in this part of the world? Let's find out. And to help me decrypt and tell those stories with a proper Latin color, I have with me in the studio my good friend Liz Arnedo. Hello Liz. Hello, how are you doing? Very good, good to have you. You are originally from Venezuela, but you lived in Colombia for a few years. Yeah. And it's a culture that you know quite well. I would say yes. Well, at least you can relate to it better than me, that's for sure. Definitely. <laughs> So, you will be the main voice for this mixtape. Um, is it your first time on a microphone? Yes, it is. Not counting the karaoke, right? right. Let's not talk about the karaoke, please. <laughs> this mixtape is primarily designed for three specific situations. Situation one, you're thinking of taking Latin dance classes, but you never really tried that kind of music and you want to get this extra boost of motivation that will make you finally subscribe to the course. Well, there you go. By the way, you can also use this mixtape to practice in front of the mirror. Remember to ignore how clumsy you may look at first. Do not care about what people think, just enjoy yourself. Situation two. You're thinking of going to Colombia for a vacation to discover the coffee region, the historic heritage, and the beautiful landscapes. Of course you need some context about what's going on over there. Hopefully this mixtape will make you want to get out of the hotel and get a real taste for the Colombian culture. Situation 3. You invited your neighbors for a thematic dinner. You cooked bandeja paisa. You're going to need appropriate background music to go with the food, with the, the frijoles rojos, con la carne morida, el chicharrón, el huevo frito, con el plátano maduro, el chorizo, los arepas, <laughs> la morcilla, el avocado y el limón. <laughs> you like my gringo accent? Very much. <laughs> Years of practice. More seriously, there's something interesting we're going to touch on here. Um, life is very hard in Colombia, uh, for, for most people. And still, the, the music is, is cheerful. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes with dramatic lyrics and, and melancholic melodies, but from abroad we, we feel mostly positive vibes. Is it just me? Or it... Mm, no, I agree with you. It is true. It's something that is very disconnected from what the reality is. I think it's always talking about love and life, but in a cheerful way, or as you say, in a melancholic way, right? And it's something that it, um, it's changing in some countries, like in Venezuela right now. They are talking more about the reality that society is living. Right. And, and this dissonance is a strange characteristic that we find in many countries' musical scene, actually, not just in Latin America. But so be it. 
it's it's worth mentioning because some of the stories we tell today are not that cheerful but uh, yeah the music is going to keep us smiling yes of course So let's get to it. This mix is titled Guts, Colombian Pura number no. 8 by Shearer. And I hope it makes you travel as much as it did for us. We had it loud in the office for the whole week. So let's go. For decades, Colombia has been in the grips of a brutal conflict that's torn its social fabric apart. It's been called an invisible crisis because it fails to make news and its victims prefer to remain anonymous. Various illegal armed groups have forced more than 3.5 million people from their homes. They operate mostly in rural areas, pushing people off their land, forcibly recruiting children, and controlling illegal drug crops.
Well, there are five themes that uh, dominate the agenda for uh, change makers in Colombia. There are corruption in politics, the, the problems around mining, the drug trafficking, and uh, the poverty eradication, the discrimination uh, in racism and uh, sexism. All these problems, of course, are interconnected and people feel quite powerless in general when they are working with change. You might feel like your life is at risk, that you are defenseless, that uh, you are not protected. Mm. And uh, yeah, there's this history of just uh, removing uh, leaders who work for the people and are fighting for change. Send them to jail. Or, or maybe be killed. All right. I know the people. Uh, this is a story that I love. The ex-mayor of Bogotá, Tanas Mocos, was uh, threatened by the FARC, like many other mayors in Colombia. Mm, the, the FARCs are this, uh, this uh, leftist guerrilla group we talk about on TV all the time, right? Yes, exactly. And Tanas Mocos decided to wear a bulletproof vest. Yeah. And uh, he cut the shape of, of the heart. In the vest. In the vest, yes. Hole cut in a heart shape in his life vest over the chest, yes. Yeah. Exactly, yes. That was a symbol of uh, confidence and defiance yeah. to, to the far, yeah. to the situation in general that they were living in that moment. How was this received? Or? Well, it was received with a lot of uh, humor, which is uh, something that I, is characteristic from people in, in Latin America. But also was very strong. It's a very strong way to of um, arriving to people and make them conscious about what is going on. This is so interesting from a change-making perspective. People 
respond to humor and, and playfulness from politicians. That's that's the way to get into there. I think so, yeah. It's the best way. Amo la Colombia verde, la Colombia que está renaciendo, que está superando la etapa en que lo básico era como sobrevivir por la pura pre pre presencia de los soldados y los policías. Ahora seguiremos con soldados y policías, pero cada vez más educados en cuidar la vida. Vaya va a sonar 
In 2010, he was a presidential candidate. People fell in love with his transparency, his simplicity, his honesty. Um, but the corruption of the government was his biggest challenge and the reason why he didn't win the election. Um, many corrupted officials began to see Mokus as a threat. Around the same time, um, the other candidate, uh, his opponent, uh, Santos, hired political advisors that were known for running dirty campaigns that affect people's reputation. They succeed to create lies, intimidation, and bad actions around locals. Another challenge in the country is mining. Communities get very affected in general. In the area of the Caqueta River, for example, companies were using mercury, cyanide and other chemicals which poison the water. And there was uh, this woman called Maria Nidia Becerra Hakanamehoy, and she was a governor three times and she has been denouncing gold mining projects and she has received a lot of threats. She was a victim of sexism and racism. She survived four direct attacks against her life. So the Colombian government assigned her guards 24-7. And that made her work much more difficult because she cannot move without attracting a lot of attention.
story of the day. Talking about mining, there's a case that recently developed, and this time in a rather positive way. Uh, remember, we need to focus on the positive. Be aware of the negative, but focus on what works. It's the story of a town in central Colombia called Marmato. It is situated on a mountain where experts estimate that 14 billion dollars of gold are waiting. Well, not sure the gold is waiting for anything, but let's say it's probably the largest untouched gold reserve in the world. In 2008, a Canadian company Medoro Resources comes to town and starts buying up the mines and land. And with the help from the Colombian government, they plan to displace 10,000 people to create an open pit mine on the top of the mountain and basically move the whole mountain one or two kilometers away so they can get the gold. So we're talking about 500 years of heritage in the region, protected environment, etc. No one cared. Community resistance, armed groups get in the game, uh, supporting one side or the other. Some local leaders are threatened or even disappear. Same old story. And uh, we share a few links so you can get the details if you want to. Now the point is that we just learned in April that the project will not carry on, it seems. And that's an important victory for the community. The Canadian company is suing the Colombian government for $700 million because they are breaching the free trade agreement by not taking care of displacing the community. So yeah, land rights were recognized as well. Um, small scale mining activities run by the locals. So good stuff. The question is, who were the change agents in the story and how did they do it? Well, many were involved and it's hard to summarize in, in a few sentences. One of the most outspoken leaders against the company was uh, Father José René Restrepo, a Catholic priest. And uh, one week after speaking up in Bogota, he was found dead. So that's one name that stood out. Also, it seems the armed group ELN, the National Liberation Army, played a role in putting pressure against the company. Uh, that's a terrorist organization, according to the US terms, because they attack infrastructure projects, a little bit like the FARCs, but with a slightly different uh, ideology. Um, yeah, we will not get into discussing who is a terrorist and who is not, but the fact is, ELN was a force of change to take into account in that story. So all in all, a rather positive development. Um, we'll be following and maybe cook something a bit more detailed in the future. Unfortunately, you know it, it's not that often that things turn in favor of the community. So we need to keep talking about this, we need to keep learning from those stories and uh, do what we can to not forget. Soy mi tierra y un nativo soy
as we're wrapping up this mixtape, um, I had one more question for you about life in Colombia in general. If you can give us a sense for what it's like to, to be there. Well, uh, honestly, it's been long since I, I haven't been in Colombia. Yeah, when, when were you there? I was there um, until 1994. Oh, so you were there during the tough times, right? Exactly. Yeah, so basically you left when Pablo Escobar got killed, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's a tough life. It's very expensive. Um, as in all the, I would say, cities in Latin America, the salaries are very low. Um, and you have to work very hard to have a good standard standard of living. Yeah, it's not it's not easy. You can be very well educated, uh, have a lot of knowledge, uh, have been to university, uh, but you might be um, ending working as a taxi driver. I think one, one interesting characteristic of our personality in Latin America is to adapt ourselves uh, in the best way we can to situations. Thank you for passing by. Thanks to you for inviting me, it was my pleasure. <laughs> Yes, my friends, life is tough around the world and we forget how lucky we are back here in Europe. We're going to do like Colombians now and smile anyway on this last song. It's my favorite. We're not tired. We crank up the volume and we'll see you soon for more green knowledge, inspiration and entertainment. Keep up the good work in the meantime. Son como las flores que vestidas van de mil colores. Ellas nunca entregan sus amores si no están correspondidas. Caminando van por las aceras, contoneando llevan su cintura. Ellas mueven las caderas como los cañaverales. La, 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 la. Las caleñas son como las flores Que vestidas van de mil colores Ellas nunca entregan sus amores Si no están correspondidas Caminando van por las aceras, contoneando llevan su cintura, ellas mueven las caderas como los cañaverales. Las caleñas son como las flores, las sencillas son como violetas, las bonitas son como gardenias, las hermosas son como las rosas, las negritas son una ricura, las gorditas son la rosura, las flaquitas son hoy cintura. Las caleñas son como las flores, las caleñas son como las flores, ay si dan amor como violetas, las caleñas son como gardenias, las sencillas son como las rosas. Sí, sí.